Katrina, we did a renovation across the street where we had been living. And uh, we did that renovation. We used regular fiberglass insulation, fiberglass under the floor. And I always felt like even after we insulated the house, the air conditioner just couldn't keep up. And uh, I ended up getting some, uh, you know, humidistats or whatever it is, some just some ways to measure humidity in the house. And I always said, man, that house is always high in humidity. I just can't get it out. Mm -hmm. And so that's really what prompted me into doing some more research on some better insulation or vapor barriers or stuff like that. And so uh, learned a lot doing that renovation. And so everything, every lesson that we learned in that renovation through the School of Hard Knocks, we brought over to this and we're trying to, you know, lessons learned, not make the same mistakes twice. So we're in a situation right now where it's time to insulate. Without insulation in this house, I've been watching what the humidity does, and it's very, very close to whatever the outside humidity is at. And I think, you know, when Jeff came over and did the initial inspection, it was obvious, you know, we had a lot of drafty. The attic's extremely drafty. There's just no insulation. So you have these tongue and groove walls and then siding and nothing in that space. Whatever's happening outdoors is happening indoors, minus the direct rainfall. And so if it's 80% humidity outside, I was observing that it was very close to 80% inside. And it's, uh, to me, that just said, I could probably, if I can seal this up like an ice chest, then I think I can control the humidity. And to me, it's important for a lot of things. First off, just comfort living wise. And then second, playing music, having a wooden piano in the house. I, I want to make sure that the humidity is stable in there. And it's, uh, uh, I just think also being a wooden house, wooden on the outside and on the inside, that the expansion, contraction, and cold and warm weather and the humidity and all that, it's, uh, I just want the house to not have to go through those stresses all the time. And uh, just seemed to make sense to use something that could really block the vapor and, and preserve the house. And so, yeah, closed cell foam to me seems to be the, uh, the answer. I've done some... Uh, windsurfing and building windsurfing boards and they use open cell foam because it's very light but a problem that we see with it is whenever you ding the board water sucks in and makes the board heavy and if I get a leak in the roof I don't want water to suck in if I get a, a leak uh, in the siding I don't want water to come in and so in a hurricane situation or a storm situation or just as time goes on, you just have some wear and tear on the house. I just, uh, I, I want to keep the water out. And uh, open cell foam, you know, in a, in a surfboard design, I, I see where a board can gain weight with water. Build a board with closed cell foam, it's a little bit heavier to start with, but that's the weight. You poke a hole in it, it doesn't get any heavier. And it just seems to work really well. And so it's, uh, I don't mind the extra weight on the house when it comes to the insulation. I think it's, I think the closed cell foam is uh, going to be, uh, in this application for me, it's going to be superior to anything that I could get anywhere else, whether it's cellulose, whether it's fiberglass, or whether it's open cell. It's, uh, this is going to deliver to me what I'm looking for, which is you know, temperature structural control, integrity too. structural integrity, temperature control, and humidity. You know, when uh, it came time to shop for the closed cell foam, or for foam in general, uh, I'd see the different contractors or, the, you know, the different operators and they're installing their product. I pick their brand and they give me their sales pitch. One of the, the, the common themes that seem to be with open cell foam is, is you want to know where your roof is leaking if you get a leak. And open cell foam is going to reveal where that leak is at. And uh, I have a hard time believing that myself because I've gone into my attic where there is no insulation and I have a leak in the roof. But where the water is actually dripping is six eight feet away from where the actual leak is and so I would have a hard time believing that if there was something there an open cell foam and there was a water spot there that uh, that's where the leak actually is I'd have to believe it's somewhere else and so the closed cell foam I think it's gonna stop the leak right where it's at or if there's a if it starts to maybe deteriorate or rot the wood right there on your sheathing that you'd be able to find that through a visual inspection from the roof and so uh talking with enviro green or with jeff you know it's uh he didn't give me that sales pitch and it's one of these deals where at the end of the day when i've talked to each one of these individuals i always pose the question well if money's not an option or if it was your home what would you use 
and uh, to the man, they've all said uh, closed cell phone. And so it's uh, a situation where I'm certainly trying to keep costs down, but in this renovation, I want to keep a, uh, I want to do the best thing for the house. And to me, it's a closed cell phone. And it's, uh, I think that's what's going to work good.